to share. Okay, so can everyone see my screen? Okay, perfect. So hello, my name is uh, Socorro. I will be talking about the R package and some of the um, the things that we have been doing uh, to try to, uh, to to teach it and to show it using uh, Docker-based educational modules. Uh, so the overview I will be going through is talk, of course, about where we are with the R package and some of the goals that we have about it. Uh, how we have been doing and handling uh, remote workshops with different communities and some of the goals that we have uh, going forward. So first, uh, the R package. Uh, where we are at currently, uh, we are very happy to let you know that we have submitted the package to CRAN. It is uh, currently going, uh, it's under review, uh, so we are in communication, but uh, it's been submitted and hopefully we can give you some good news soon. Uh, the R package is, uh, of course, uh, open and hosted in GitHub. You can see the link uh, in the bottom of the slides, but of course we can uh, provide it later. Um, and it currently has an MIT license, so pretty much anyone can have access to it. People can use it, people can edit it. Uh, well, they can collaborate with us, with, which is also important as we need more voices from the community. And uh, it is also uh, a great way that, well, we have been working with uh, handling the data from the API to wrap it and to, and to implement it also in, in different uh, R workflows that you may have. Uh, we try to protect the, the structure or the, the way that the data is stored from the Neotoma database. Uh, and this is important because since we are trying to not just be one community base, like we want to expand to different kinds of workflows, uh, this data structure will allow us to, to modify our and work with uh, different data types. Uh, some of the highlights that we that we have regarding the the package, uh, we have um, implemented several uh, data key access, uh, but we have also tried working on the presentation methods. Uh, we have uh, done functions that allow mapping, and we have also done like um, tools or ways of working with data frames and certain libraries to make it easier so that uh, you can create stratigraphic plots or the alike. Uh, we have also done uh, vignettes uh, that and examples that allow us to work with different uh, data set types, such as diatoms, pollens, uh, vertebrate, fauna. And in the vignettes, we also try to showcase uh, different um, analysis and data transformations that, that uh, you can do. Um, the package is tested, like we, we are also writing tests continuously uh, using code coverage. We have a 55% of code coverage. Uh, it is important to note that we do not need to, to reach a 100%. Of course, we want to keep on increasing this number, but this is just to help us keep the package robust. This, this means that as we are coding, we are also making sure that, the, that we do not send any errors into production, that we have a, a more stable package that we don't have to be, um, that you don't have to experience too much failures with. So this is just more of a preventative measure on our end. Uh, some of the goals that we have uh, down the road, we would like to implement a data validator and, uh, uh, and use the R package also as a way to upload data. Uh, we do have uh, shared vignettes publicly, but we always want more. Uh, so we want to add more, and uh, we would also like to reach out to more communities. Uh, the vignettes are currently in English and Spanish. Uh, some of the examples are in Spanish as well. But we would we we think that we need to add more languages. Uh, recently, uh, we had a workshop with the APD, and it was commented that it would be useful to have a French translation. So that is something that we are also uh, thinking of. But of course. It's not just three languages. If we can have more, uh, that would be nice. Uh, and um, we are also like thinking and exploring the idea of uh, maybe having some sort of cookbook tool. Like if um, if someone needs to do a certain piece of analysis, uh, they could search, how do I do this? And kind of have like a recipe or some snippets of code that can 
aid and help um, researchers. Now, uh, the remote workshops. We started holding uh, remote workshops, uh, I guess for a obvious reason at first, uh, uh, but we have continued them and we actually have a really good attendance. They are very helpful because uh, nobody really needs to, to spend a lot of money or time traveling. And although having in-person in uh, meetings is always fun, Definitely remote workshops or hybrid workshops have helped us reach way out more communities that, that we would have hoped for. Um, of course, we can, again, reach more. Uh, remote learning also uh, forced us to, to find different ways of teaching, like alternate ways of teaching, because when even when we were like in meeting or in person workshops, Sometimes we would face these issues on with technology. Like if we ask people to install their package, they might have like the dependencies issues or bugs or something going on around. And we would defer from teaching to, to try to troubleshoot. So this also allowed us to, to come up with new, with new tools, well, uh, or to implement uh, tools that were uh, in the state of art. So basically we have implemented um, a binder uh, that is like pretty much a Docker-based uh, component, JupyterHub, where we can run uh, an R instance. So we can run R Studio basically, uh, just as a quick guideline. So here you, you can see in my screen, this is a URL that I can easily provide to, to students. You might not see very clear, but I can uh, load the, the Neotoma to our package, I can start coding. We also have some of the vignettes uh, here going on. So for example, I can, well, not this one, but I can open, well, uh, well, I think I opened it too early, my binder, but basically uh, I can access all the, all the tools that we need so that folks can, uh, can follow through the, the workshop easily. Uh, what what we need to do, sorry, is we basically provide um, participants advance uh, a bit advance in time. We always give them this bitly link, and we also provide them with an agenda. And we tell them, well, try to launch this um, R instance uh, maybe a few hours before, so that it starts running, um, and then this workshop or this link is always live. Uh, students can go back and forth. They can experiment. They can keep on playing with, with our studio in this binder. And we remove the, the pressure of like installing everything. Uh, we can also run these workshops uh, via Zoom, Google Meets, uh, hybrid. Um, it, it has been like um, different strategies for running them, uh, but it, it definitely has helped us uh, reach out different communities. Also, we have all of the works, workshops have been archived in a GitHub repository. So people can also go back to those um, workflows and reproduce them as they need. Uh, these are some of the official hosts uh, where, the, where the workshops have taken place. So we recently had a workshop for the Fraser Valley University in British Columbia. However, we did have folks joining from China and some from Russia. We also hosted a workshop for the APD through Penn State University. But again, a lot of people were joining from, from Africa. So we have done hybrid workshops uh, in Bariloche, Argentina. Uh, we did some sort of hybrid, hybrid workshop in EPD in Prague last year. And recently we had an INQUA funded workshop in, in India. So, we definitely are seeing that we are reaching uh, way more communities that, that we have um, before. And also we are reaching communities that historically have not always been able to, to travel or uh, communities that have been underrepresented even in Yotoma. So just to finalize uh, some of the goals that we have, uh, we would like to see more diversity in language in the vignettes. We have some in Spanish, but we, we do have uh, other interests in other languages as well. And uh, we would like to have multiple people being able to run these workshops. Recently, we had um, the EPD run a Paleofire workshop uh, with Thomas and Petra. 
And uh, of course, we would like to have more improved documentation and as we develop more on the package, uh, uh, keep this documented and improved it. And we would also like to, again, expand vignettes, expand workflows so that we can uh, showcase um, different use of the vignettes of the package as we are still a little bit maybe Poland centric. So I think that's it for, for me. And again, uh, well, I guess questions will go at the end. Thank you so much.